Well, for more on that story, we're going to be joined by uh, Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley, who is an author and historian here on Press TV's World News. Mr. Tarpley, thank you for joining us always on Press TV. Uh, France is the first country thank to you. officially commit its military to this serious situation. Is this a parallel to the role France played in Libya? Well, uh, President Hollande has been the target of a uh, very vigorous campaign by the uh, reactionaries and colonialists in France, people around Sarkozy, and including Sarkozy himself, demanding that Hollande take the lead as the aggressor in, in Syria. I think it's a kind of a desperation tactic to try to get something going when it's not going. Today we've had Hillary Clinton visiting Turkey, and in her meeting with Foreign Minister Davutoglu, they talked about a no-fly zone that the United States and Turkey would somehow, would perhaps with other countries, try to impose a no-fly zone over Syria, which of course would mean war. Uh, Brennan, the anti-terror czar of the Obama White House, had talked about a no-fly zone earlier this week at a meeting of the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, it's not clear whether that's just talk, whether that's bluffing. Um, given the track record of these people, we would have to take it very seriously indeed. Now, uh, on another front, the U.S. Uh, Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton has come out saying Washington and Ankara are working on a detailed military and intelligence operation, uh, hopefully to bring regime change in Syria. Do you think it's going to work? No, I think, uh, I think this is uh, a some, somewhat a desperate plan now. And I think the, the big turning point actually occurred yesterday. The Tehran Consultative Conference on Syria, it seems to me, is a landmark event in our times. Uh, 30 countries coming together on the basis, I would say, of national independence and national dig dignity. Not much more than that, but that's already a lot in today's world. Uh, and certainly organized by the uh, Iranian Foreign Ministry, with the presence of Russia, China, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, uh, Kazakhstan, Venezuela, Sudan, uh, a very important uh, selection of countries across the world. It obviously shows that Syria is not isolated in the way that, that Hillary Clinton says. Uh, and this is really the first time we've had a kind of task-oriented anti-imperialist conference. And it's very interesting, here in the United States, the media has not a word about this. It's a complete blackout. I've looked at the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, the television stations. There's nothing about this conference. I think the U.S. State Department is freaked out because this is a huge defeat for Hillary Clinton. What is, what is Hillary Clinton's diplomacy worth if 30 countries, including about half the world when you get down to it, can come together on a pro-Syrian, pro-independence uh, platform? So it, it seems to me that the imperialists are probably getting desperate. This is, of course, the classic time when they, re, they resort either to some kind of Gulf of Tonkin incident, something military, or the classic false flag that we've seen them play so many times. Uh, now, of course, uh, Libya did not have uh, this support in the situation of that time. However, how can one explain the U.S.'s double standards on Syria mm -hmm. when you look at it compared to its role that it takes in Bahrain and Yemen? And why is the Western public opinion silent on the atrocities committed against the civilians by the so-called Free Syrian Army, in your opinion? Well, I don't, I don't think there's total silence uh, here in the West. I think there's, there's, a, there's an awareness, and it's a, it's a growing awareness. Obviously, the first part of your question, it's, this is uh, hypocrisy. Uh, what I think we're getting towards now, though, is a, a situation where you'd, you'd have to frankly admit there are two blocks of states. There's an imperialist block with the U.S., the British, NATO, the Israelis, and so forth. But then there's an anti-imperialist bloc, which is very large and quite formidable. When you got Russia, China, India, Pakistan, Indonesia, that's already uh, a great deal. Let me also focus on the Pakistani foreign minister, uh, Mrs. Carr, who I think made a, a, a landmark statement of her own, right, that it's, it's time now to reject very categorically any idea of foreign intervention into Syria. So. Uh, this, this leaves the, the U.S. In a, in a terrible 
predicament, and I, we have to see how they're going to get out, and it might be some ugly surprises. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley, author and historian, joining us here from Washington on Press Libby's International News.